from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. And you know what they say about dark Italians. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues. You really care about it's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacka or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. You know, times are tough. I know times are tough. And I know that uh, all kinds of people are suffering financially. Many people are, uh, and by the way, many people with perfectly great jobs, have had great careers. Business has been great for so many years. Many people are paying. Many people are suffering. Many people are out of work. Many people are finding themselves with Less cash because of the cost of gasoline, even for a car that doesn't use a lot of gasoline, it's still a lot of money people are spending. People are looking for ways to cut down, people are looking for ways to improve their own personal economy. You know, you're listening to somebody who was almost bankrupt three different times. I mean, I was this close. I was ready to do it. I was ready to file. But somewhere in there, I decided, and I feel that way to this day, we are talking uh, back when I was, uh, oh, let's say 25, 30 years old, whatever, uh, I decided at some point that I was going to pay back all my bills, I was going to pay back all my debts, I decided that I was not going to be a deadbeat, and I decided that paying my bills and being financially responsible was only moral. I'm an atheist. I don't subscribe to any particular religion, any particular religious scripture, but I will tell you that I believe that paying your bills and having good credit, saving, investing, and planning are the height of morality. Not borrowing money from people you don't plan to pay back or that you won't be able to pay back, not buying things you can't afford, saving up for big purchases rather than putting them on a credit card when you know you'll never be able to pay it off. Because many people are hurting right now, there's no better time for the, the for us to talk about money, saving, investing, planning, preparing, dealing with what's going on out there. As many of you know, I am a self-made multi-billionaire. I don't have seminars. I don't have a book for sale. I don't consult people. I'm not a certified financial planner. I'm a guy who grew up dirt poor, who built up my finances to a point where I could retire today. I love what I do, and I love what I get paid, so I keep doing it. But if I wanted to, I could stop now. Now, I uh, I was not born with any advantages. My parents were dirt poor. We lived in a one-bedroom apartment in the South Bronx. Four kids, one bedroom. So it's not like I was born with all these advantages. I was born with a lot of uh, handicaps in life. But I decided at age 12, I turned around to my family much to their chagrin, and I said, I'm better than all this. And I was, and I am. 
So at a time when people are having a hard time with money, you may have some money questions. Rather than calling the usual stockbrokers who do radio programs or certified financial planners or others, why not talk to a guy who did it from the ground up? Why not talk to a guy who for years was in the same position you are today and who broke out of it? A guy who did it without a college education, which, by the way, I wouldn't recommend for anybody not getting a college education. But I had no choice. If I was going to succeed, I had to punch ahead and, and succeed without one. Would have been a lot easier with one. I'm telling you right now. So we only do this from time to time. We don't do it on a regular basis. But if you have got money questions, questions about your finances, questions about how to save, whether to invest, what to do about your mortgage, how to conserve cashola at a time like this, there's nobody better you could possibly ask. And here's your chance. Tom Likes. I just got out of from a two-year relationship and... I, I love how guys talk about relationships like it's prison. I just got out of a two-year relationship. I know, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, they just left me by the side of the road. I just got out of a two-year relationship and I had to hitch a ride uh, from the prison. The Tom Likey Show. show. Right, we're going to talk about money this hour. Right now. Let's do it. Let's start here with, uh, oh boy, Eric on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's going on, Tom? How are you doing? I'm doing okay. All right. I really need your help. I'm here. Okay. Um, I used to live up north. Uh, NorCal, Northern Cali. Moved down south for a job. Gonna work with the state. It went, it went bad due to my credit. Um, apparently I have $2,000 from an insurance claim of my buddy stealing my car. And, uh, wait, 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 wait. Your buddy stole your car? Yes, he did. Uh, well, that's quite a friend you have there. I uh, know. I didn't think he would do that, but hey, I mean, Whatever you know, you find out the hard way. Then also, so, so wait a minute. He stole your car, and why is there a claim against you? Well, because the whole deal went. Uh, one day, I decided I was going to sell it to him, and he had money. Just got a settlement from some injury, and he blew it on girls and booze and whatever. And so, because the officer said that at one point I had uh, it going to sell it to him that. They couldn't press anything, or, you know. There was no forced entry. I don't know how that happened. Um, but they couldn't pursue it because I was in negotiation to sell it to him. So how that went south, I don't know. But So you, you still know, own the car, guy. and then he had an accident with it while you still owned it? Yeah, not only, did he had a, not only did he have an accident, he also fled the scene, and I got stuck with the bill. And um, uh, did you have insurance? Oh, yes, I did. But the insurance company said, F you. Yeah, because he's not on the list, and I guess, you know, I wasn't the driver. I mean, uh, it, it's just a horrendous story. So I have All right, that so that, that's 2000 uh, What else do you have? Also, um, I had a very nice Tahoe. By the way, let me ask you this question. That $2,000 claim, did you know about it? No, actually, I didn't know about it until I, uh, I applied for the state for a position with the state of California, and my application was terminated due to a very bad credit report, and I was able to get a copy of, I think, a CRW, and it told me a bunch of stuff, and that is amongst one of the things that I have. Um, how many How many things do you have? Like about 10 or 20. And are they accurate? Some of them are, and some of them I'm trying to dispute. I believe no, but the ones you're trying to dispute, are they accurate, too? The, as far as accurate, as far as... Like, when you mean accurate, what do you mean? 
I mean, there are bad negative uh, reports on your or negative marks on your credit report. You're trying to dispute some of them. Are they all wrong, or are you trying to dispute them to see if you can get away with it? Oh, no, no. Like, about two of them are wrong, and the other eight are, I'm pretty much of the dumbass, and I'm, you know, I'm liable. Why, why did you allow that to happen? You know what? It, it started off because I started working at a very young age, and I was out on my own at 17. I thought I knew everything. No one could tell me wrong. And, uh, you know, I'm now I'm paying for my... You know, jackass decisions. Unbelievable. So you never bothered to check your own credit, and you didn't care about your credit rating? Oh, no, I didn't even. And until the state job, I couldn't care less because I had a, I had a cell phone, which doesn't really build credit. Um, I had a credit with the uh, jewelry place because at uh, 17, I thought I found the one, which was pretty stupid of me. Um, yeah, the list goes on and on. But... Like I said, I have the two thousand dollar thing against me. When I was with my ex, um, I was giving her my money to make the payment for me, and she couldn't do that. So I got my I got my car repoed, and uh, now I owe like about six something on there. And, so that's uh, the eight thousand. And the rest are just medical bills. Medical bills for what? For I guess. I was uh, I was insured under an uh, insurance company, and I went for blood tests. I went for operations, and uh, I pretty much was not covered, and they want me to foot that bill, so that's the one I'm disputing. So you didn't know that you weren't covered? No, I I'm still battling right now with the company. They're, they're saying my term was, uh, I guess the invoice was billed after my term ended, which... On um, the date of the procedure and the date of my services should have been billed during my term, so I'm battling that. And right. So I was telling you, I was telling your screener. Um, right now, I'm paying about two fifty to three hundred, and I'm living with my sisters. Pretty much, my rent money pays the utilities. Now, I can keep on doing that, and use. I make like about eight hundred a week. So doing I what? Can, what do you do for a living? I work for a warehouse that distributes parts for cities. Right. And by the way, the university you attended was Bonham Young? I don't know. It was, a, it was a, what do you call it, University of uh, the Jackass. That's right. what it was. Bonham, Bonham Young University. Yeah, yeah. You were 17 and you had the one. You had the girlfriend. I don't know. I, I said Who needs college? You're getting laid. Yeah. Right? Well, right now, actually, it wasn't college. It was, I have ADD, which is not an excuse, but I hated school, you know? I made through school and that was it. I figured, you know, I'll just work my way to the top and guess what? It's not working. Um, well, because part of working your way to the top is uh, keeping your attention span long enough on your credit rating and the bills you're incurring uh, to pay them and not be a deadbeat like you are. Pretty much, you're right. So, my question is, is do I live with my sisters and pay a very low amount, or do I spend two to three hundred dollars more, which could go towards my bills, and get my own place like rent a room? Uh, son, floor? I think you need to uh, to save any way you can, and if your sister will let you live there for three hundred dollars a month, I say grab it, but because you uh, you have got a lot of bills to pay. Yeah. But also, at the end, it's like my sanity, you know what I'm saying? Like, these, first of all, living with a woman is crazy. But yet, I'm living with two women, so it's even more crazy, you know what I'm saying? You know what's really crazy? Yeah. Being a deadbeat. Oh, uh, tell me about it. It's it's not... If I could go back, uh, let me tell you. All right, but the point is that now you have to pay the bills. Yeah. And that means you can't afford your own apartment. All right. You can't. So, so you're saying instead of dishing out that extra three hundred bucks to get my own space, my own sanity, and my happiness, because it's not just three hundred bucks. You're gonna put in cable TV. You're gonna put in internet. Right. 
Actually, no. I don't watch TV because I'm in the middle of working two jobs. So you're not going to have any utilities? Just light and phone. Not even phone. I have my cell phone, so, you know, all I would need is light, gas, and that's it. Well, you're not paying for those now. Yeah, actually, actually I'm not paying rent. I'm just paying the utilities. But so the my point is, are... my point is, you would go from paying $300, and by the way, where are these $600 a month apartments you're talking about? No, no, it's not an apartment. It's like a studio, kind of. Where are these $600 a month studios in Los Angeles? Where are they located? Oh, they're located. You're going to laugh. It's not crazy. They're like, like renovated rooms, pretty much. What does that mean? It means it's a house that had a garage at one point, and they remodeled it into a room. All right, so you're renting a, a, a room at someone's house. Correct. Which you're still going to have probably a woman there or other people around. Yeah, but it's a private entrance, you know. They don't see me come in. They don't see me leave, which is good because, no. you know. So what is your question? My question is, how wise would it be? I mean, to be able to to be able to go ahead and do what I do, I need to keep a good mental edge. You know, I can't afford to have any mishaps. Um, as far as, you know, them running my life, I'm the only man in the house. They expect me to do a lot of crap. They want the trash taken out at a certain time. They want the lawn mowed a certain length. You know, they want me to move certain things. And it's like, I mean, I went from being a... All right, get yourself a room. Fine. Uh, the, the bottom line here, son, is that you have to make, you have to talk to all your creditors. Everybody who showed up on that credit report. You have to call each one of them. And you have to tell them your plan is to pay back every penny, every penny you owe. And that you need to work out a payment plan so that you can be on time and that you plan to stay in touch with them so that uh, they know where you are. And so if you're even a minute late with a payment, they can contact you and let you know. Yeah. You have to do that. Because right now the, the main thing that I'm really worried about is the interest on some of these payments that I'm going to be looking at. Well, guess what? Uh, you you put yourself in this position, sir. I just hope whoever's listening, they actually think about what they do. Because let me tell you, it it does it does not. And by the good. way, you need to figure out which of the uh, bills you have has the highest interest uh, uh, rate, and you need to pay that one down first, while you make the minimum payments on all the others. Uh, I have a, another question too. What do you think about like these consolidators that get all these debts consolidated? How do you, how does how does that work? And what do you think about it? Uh, you know what? Uh, I have read that when you get one of those loans, that goes on your credit report as well. Another sign that you're a deadbeat. Okay. How about you just do it the old-fashioned way? Yeah. Call your creditors. Tell them you haven't disappeared. Tell them you plan to pay them every penny. Ask them if there's anything they can do to help you with the interest rate. Most of them won't. Some of them might. You're right. And then decide on the help. Have them decide on what the monthly payments are, the minimum payments you have to make. And then... Make the payments and never, ever make a mistake. Yeah, the, mistake I'm dealing, the mistake I'm dealing with right now, Tom, is I could save 300 bucks and use that towards my bills. But I'm not happy with that decision. So now I gave you the other information. I, we, we can't go on and on all day like this, but I think at least you've got a game plan. So good luck. Wow. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Tina, we are talking about money on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Long time, first time. Yeah. I have a couple questions about investing and saving versus um, paying off the debt. Well, here's my situation. I'm 24. I just graduated from school, and I started my new job this past month. And my credit card will be, the debt will be gone by the end of this month, and my school loans will be paid off within little more than half a year, what would be a good start to do some small time investments or wait, work? Wait, so you will have you'll have zero you'll have zero debt? 
Yes, by the end of the year. That includes car loans, um, mortgages, nope. or anything like that. You have nothing. 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 Okay, good. That's a good start. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing you want to do is have a, a, a retirement account, individual retirement account. Right, I have that. You have a Roth IRA? I'm sorry? Is it a Roth IRA? Yes, I have a Roth IRA and I put into my 401k account at work. Do you max it out? Yes. So you put the maximum amount in that they let you put in? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now let me ask you this question before we talk about what you're going to invest in. Do you know okay. what you're invested in now? What am I invested in? Yeah. No. Why not? I haven't taken the time to look into it. Well, then why are you worried about what new investments to make? Well, I still when I opened the Roth IRA, I chose the more aggressive style. Uh, so which mutual fund did you choose? I went with Fidelity. Yeah, but which fund? Oh, I don't know. Well, and darling, you have homework to do. Right. You shouldn't make any investments until you know what you have. You know why? Mm-hmm. No. How do you know you won't make investments that duplicate the investments you already have? Wouldn't that just increase my money anyway? No. You need to be diversified. Okay. You, you need to have investments across a broad range of companies. What are called large cap companies, which are the companies with the biggest market value. Companies like Exxon Mobil. Mm -hmm. Companies like, uh, Microsoft. Uh, medium capitalization companies that are called mid caps. Mm -hmm. Uh, which, uh, aren't as big as the companies I named for you before. Mm -hmm. Starbucks might be one of those, I have a feeling. Others, I wouldn't recommend Starbucks at this point, but that's beside the point. Right. I'm not a stockbroker. And then what are called small cap or small capitalization companies, which are smaller emerging companies. And mm -hmm. you can invest in all of these through mutual funds. But first, you have to know what you're invested in. But I read that investing in mutual funds eat up a lot of the earnings because of the fees. Well, darling, uh, it depends on where you invest. So and by the way, you question. don't, by the way, you're paying the fee for a reason. Okay. Mm -hmm. You don't know anything about investing. Right. And the person running the mutual fund does. So you need to work with the companies that have the lowest fees. So where could I go to do some more research into these investments? Any books or any authors you recommend? I recommend a website, Morningstar.com. You have to pay $129 a year for it. They just give you financial advice? They actually have a database of mutual funds. Mm -hmm. And you'll be able to look up your mutual funds on there, and you'll be able to find out how highly rated they are or aren't. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to find out how they performed over the years, what companies they're invested in, so that when you make your next investment, it will not overlap the existing investment. Right. I mean, what is the point of having five mutual funds that all invest in the same kind of companies? I'm sorry? What would be the point of being invested in, say, three, four, five different mutual funds who all invest in the same kinds of companies? That's true. There's no point. You, what you need to do is diversify. Mm -hmm. So you need an even spread among those three kinds of companies? Not necessarily even. You just need to be spread out across you know, a, a, a broad range. But, but you see, your first step has to be learning what you already have. Right. And you don't know what you have. Right. Is I it large caps, that. small caps, technology? Mm -hmm. Is it uh, uh, foreign companies? Is it international right. bond funds? Do you know what you're invested in? No, you don't. Right. Say you're invested in Fidelity. is like saying you're invested in Wells Fargo. Not the stock. You have money in the bank. That doesn't tell us what you're invested in. Mm-hmm. So you need to go back to wh whoever is uh, holding that account for you. Did uh -huh. you do it through Fidelity Investments directly? Uh huh. You need to call Fidelity Investments. You used to say you need to tell them your Social Security number, your account number, whatever, and you need to say what am I invested in? How do I Make find out about my four hundred one k? That's through my employer. Right. You have to call the Human Resources Department at your employer. Or go down there. Mm hmm. And you need to ask them point blank to give you, by the way, they probably gave you a brochure that listed all the 
uh, investment choices, and you probably looked at it and threw it away and said, oh, I'm aggressive. Let's go aggressive. And then you never allowed them to look into it again, right? Right. Now you need to go back and get that piece of paper again. Okay. And then you need to see the names of the funds you're in. And then you need to look okay. them up on a, uh, on a site like Morningstar.com. Right. That would be useful. Wouldn't that make sense? Yes. And then, that. and only then should you be deciding what to invest in. Oh, uh, by the way, another thing to invest in, darling. Mm -hmm. Do you, Do you have six months of living expenses in the bank? Yes. You do. Mm -hmm. How much does it cost you to live six months? Um, right now, only I would say about five hundred. Five hundred thousand dollars. No, five hundred dollars a month. Darling, how much is your rent? I don't pay rent right now. Where do you live with your parents? Yes. All right. And you don't pay utilities? No. But but that's going to change at some point soon, isn't it? Right. I'm fully prepared for that. But are you prepared to have six months of living expenses when you're like a big girl living in your own apartment? Yes. How much do you have saved? I have about 4000 that's not six months of expenses living on your own like a big girl. Right, but I need to still add to that. I just started working a month ago. I understand, darling, but you're asking what to invest in. Right, I'm just asking how I, I can I'm telling you, all right, here, first thing you need to do, uh -huh. fill, up, fill up a savings account. Uh-huh. Until you get to six months of expenses. Let's start off with a basic. Have you looked at what an apartment costs in San Diego lately, darling? Yes, I do. And you know if how I much have. that is. It's a lot, right? Right. What's a one bedroom going for? Like eighteen hundred, two thousand, something like that? No, not even. You can how find much? one for about thirteen, fourteen. All right. So fourteen hundred times six, do you know how much that is? That is eight seven thousand eight hundred. No. no, it's eight thousand four hundred dollars. Oh. You have four thousand dollars. You do not have enough to pay six months rent. Much less electricity, gas, cable TV, internet, clothing, See, that's without groceries. Considering, that's without considering the situation. I wouldn't live by myself in a $1,300 apartment. Fine. Let's call it a 50-50 split with a roommate. That's mm -hmm. six fifty a month plus all okay. the expense. Six fifty a month times six. How much? That's about 4000 Six fifty a month times six. Oh, five thousand. Five thousand. <laughs> Darling, it's uh, it's actually uh, let's see, it's about four thousand. You're right, it's about four thousand. Let's forty two hundred, something like that. Okay, huh? that's forty two hundred. Now, so I'm close to having the six. But months. you're but you're not because how are you going to turn the lights on? With electricity. And, and where are you going to get that? From work. For my paycheck. Uh, no, no, but darling, <laughs> I, this is emergency funds. Money you will need. You know, have you looked at the economy? Maybe, maybe we're not talking the same language here. Have you looked at the economy lately? Yes, I have, but it hasn't affected my work yet. Right? Yet. But that's just a possibility. That's not. You, you have to be prepared, reality. darling. You have to be prepared for the possibilities. Look, if but you don't I want am. my advice, I won't give it to you. No, that's why I'm calling. I'm telling you, you need to be prepared for the worst. Right. That's I why it's called that. a rainy day fund. That means you need six months of actual living expenses in the bank. That's your first investment. Once you've maxed out your retirement funds, that's mm -hmm. where you got to put the money. In okay. the bank, they're liquid, waiting for you in case of emergency. Okay. These are definitely tough times. You could mm -hmm. lose your job. What if you were living in an apartment with a roommate? Like what if the two of you had your names on a lease and you lost your job? What would you do? Well, I would go searching for another job right away. But what, what, Have you seen what the economy looks like? Do you know how hard it is right now to find a job? Honestly, no, it hasn't affected me, so I wouldn't say I have Yet! Well, darling, trust me when I tell you, because I read the paper. No, I understand. I know what's going on. I'm just saying I haven't had that experience. So well, I well, I'm know, telling I you, prepare going. for the experience. Okay. Lots of people are having this experience who never thought they were going to have it. 
Mm-hmm. You ever hear of Ed McMahon? I'm sorry? You ever hear of the guy named Ed McMahon? Yes, he's pretty poor now. Yeah, well, he had $200 million in the 90s. Yeah, but I don't have a money-spending wife. That's like the point. Is. The point is you have no idea when these things are going to hit you. Also, mm -hmm. Ed McMahon has a broken neck, and as right. a result of that, he can't work. Mm -hmm. How do you know you won't break your neck, dear? I don't know that. Well, but anything can happen to you. That's right. why it's called a rainy day fund. It's money for a rainy day. Right. You need six months of real world living expenses in the bank. That's your first investment. Okay. The investment is in you incorporated. Mm-hmm. Okay? Right. That way, you know if you lose your job, if you get hurt or sick, that you won't just collapse. Right. Doesn't that make sense? Yes. Okay. Okay. So bottom line, find out what you're invested in mm -hmm. and start putting money in the bank. Okay. Okay. Once you've got six months of living expenses, and by the way, I don't think you have any idea how much that is. I do, you, actually. I've been on my own. So you know how much six months of electric bills, six months of gas bills, six months of cable yes, TV do. bills, six months of cell phone bills, six yes. months, you know how much all that is. I'm completely aware of that. I've been supporting myself for the past three years, at least, really? living on my own. Well, so you moved back in with your parents? Mm-hmm. So I can I save to pay off my school loans. And you think $4,000 is six months of living expenses? Well, I'm pretty much a paycheck and a half away from getting up to six months of living expenses. So how, much is, how much is six months of living expenses? 5000 So $5,000. Mm -hmm. So that's that you have 4200 in rent according to you. Uh-huh. And that leaves $800 to live on for 6 months. Right. What do you spend at the supermarket these days? Probably about $50 a week. $50 a week. Do you know how much 50 times 26 is? It's 1, save it the time it's $1300. Okay. All right. So, uh, you've said $4,200 on rent mm -hmm. and 1300 on groceries. How much is that? That's $5,500. Mm -hmm. And you haven't turned the light on yet. Right. Darling, you don't know how much it costs to live on your own. You don't, and I'm afraid I for do. you. I do. You know what? It's just I don't pay the full bill. It's always been split, so I don't know. Well, but that's why you don't. That you're, that you're telling me you don't know because you've never paid the full bill. Mm-hmm. But see, I'm not arguing with you. I understand I need the six months of living expenses. I think you're... But you have to know what they are. I think right. you are underestimating how much that is. Okay. Well, see, because you're the first time that I heard six months. I've heard from CNN Money to save about three months. So it's never been... I've never heard of the six months. So it, it never crossed my mind to save that much money. Six months, dear. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Tom. All right, darling. Good luck. Appreciate the call. Yeah. Tom. Tom. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 You really do not like women, do you? I love women. As long as uh, their breasts are in my face. It's the Tom Likes Show. Talking money here at one eight hundred five eight hundred. Who doesn't love money? People who say they don't love money, <laughs> they don't have any. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Vincent on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Going great. I just had a question for you. If you had thirty thousand to invest or play around with to get uh, a good rate of return, what would you put it in? Why am I convinced that uh, you don't have 30000 to play around with? You have $30,000. Yeah, $30,000. Uh, uh, so you have no debt? I have no debt whatsoever. I got 10000 in a Roth, which is, which is down 15% this year. I'm in Brookshire Halfway B shares. I got another 10000 in a 401k, which is down 11%, which is in a sampling foreign fund. 
and uh, I got actually I got forty thousand. I'm, I'm gonna keep ten ten thousand in the bank, but uh, I wanted to put thirty thousand. See what you think about what I could do with the other thirty thousand. Well, keep in I make, mind I make about a hundred thousand a year too. So. Well, I would not put thirty thousand dollars in the stock market at one time if I were you. Let's start with that. Okay. Okay. Uh, the reason is because uh, on any given day, the market can go up three hundred points. Or it can go down 300 points. And if you put all the money in at one time, this can happen to you. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm thinking maybe I, I, I'm going uh, to just put it in over the course of the next year or so. Yeah, okay. Uh, but anyway, uh, the bottom line here is that... Um, you want to put it in slowly into it now. By the way, are you putting money into your existing funds? Oh well, I put six percent into my four hundred one k, and uh, and the reason why I don't put too much in my four hundred one k is because I really don't like none of the funds that that are available to me. But uh, max up, I max up my Roth every year, so. Right, I understand that. And uh, so now you're putting money outside of your retirement income for the first time, correct? Right. This is the first money you've invested outside of a retirement account. Uh, well, well, I mean, it? I haven't invested it outside of my Roth or my 401k yet. This 4000 is just in cash. That's what I just said. You have not invested outside of your retirement accounts. Right, correct, correct. So this will be the first time. Yes, sir. I feel like I've said this four times now. Okay. <laughs> Um, well, right now, you, you go in slowly, and I would stay with the big names right now. Uh, do you have a mutual fund in your retirement accounts that invests in the S&P 500? I think so. I haven't really been watching. Well, you need to yeah, put it this way. Don't invest in one until you know if you've already got it. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's a good place to go. Vanguard has a good S&P 500 index fund. And when all the crazy gyrations of the stock market are over, people are going to be invested in quality names, big companies with names you know. And that's what the S&P 500 is. Okay, so I, I'm going to go there, and, and I guess what you just said, quality funds, big names, I should just keep on investing in my Brookshire Halfway B shares in too, right? Oh, I, well, absolutely, but that's your retirement account, right? Yeah, but I could uh, I could buy some more shares out of my retirement account. I mean, no, the purpose of buying more, in, uh, doing more investing is to diversify. Okay, okay. And Berkshire Hathaway uh, does invest in big name companies, but only the ones that Warren Buffett invested, not the whole market. All right. You understand? Yeah. I, in the S&P 500 fund, you get the 500 stocks that make up the S&P 500. Okay. You don't just get Dairy Queen and Coca Cola and Microsoft. You get <laughs> you you get uh, all five hundred companies. Now that's diversity. Okay. What about a uh, big bet? I mean, are you betting on something real hard? Right I don't. Now I don't. There, there's no betting in the stock market. Betting is for Las Vegas. Yeah, it is. I mean, no but betting. I'm saying something that you could risk. I mean, something that. Is there is there like something that you you got your eye on right now that the whole market is a big risk right now? Do you understand? It's like the market is insane. Yeah, it sure is. I would recommend not making any big bets. All right. I would recommend it's boring. I know, and you'd like a little excitement in your life. I would recommend investing month by month, dollar cost averaging into a fund that invests in large cap companies like the S and P five hundred. Okay, Vanguard, the Vanguard fund, right? Vanguard is one. Fidelity has one. T. Rowe Price has one. The, pretty much every big investment company has one, and they all pretty much perform the same. Vanguard generally has the lowest costs, the lowest in expense ratio of any of them. And percentage-wise, how much percentage-wise do you think I should have invested in that fund? Well, I don't think any fund should be more than 10% of your total investments. Okay, okay. But that's certainly the safest bet. If you're looking for a bet, that's the safest bet. Okay. Well, I appreciate it, Tom. Good luck. All right, thanks. By the way, folks, keep in mind, I'm not a registered investment advisor. I'm not a certified financial planner. I'm not a stockbroker. 
I'm a self-made multimillionaire, and I'm giving you my opinions based on my experiences. You should see a professional. And that means call a, a broker, call somebody who is a certified financial planner. I'm just giving you some ideas. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Nick on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay, Nick. Hey, I got a... I got a problem. My uh, 401k is really underperforming. I've, uh, I've well, you got a pro- by the way, you got a problem everybody has, including me. Yeah, um, I'm about 28, and uh, I have about 10,000 invested in my 401k so far. And uh, for about three months, it's been going down. I don't know, negative 12 or 10 percent. And uh, I've lost about thousand dollars so far on that. Uh, I don't think that's much, but I feel that at the rate that it's going, I'm going to be losing more money from, uh, from that 401k. Well, you can't invest that way. Um, you have not lost a thousand dollars. You are down a thousand dollars, and uh, you're not selling any of those funds. Uh, you're not getting out of your retirement account anytime soon. That's true. You, what you need to do is keep the investments in your 401k relatively conservative. Are they? Um. They, they aren't right now. Uh, I'm Why mostly not? I'm in uh, the large caps, the mid caps. Um. Large caps are not a risk. Large caps uh, are the, uh, the sector that's likely to come back first when everything is uh, done uh, gyrating. So, so you suggest I just uh, write it out and let, let it... Uh... Especially with your retirement account. I absolutely do, Nick. Thank you for the call. Good luck. The Tom Likas Show.